Anthony on Air Podcast back for another episode. Jay Sabs in the house co-hosting, and we're talking about some pretty big breaking news in the Ghislaine Maxwell saga. We'll get into that. Plus, uh, who's going to be president come January? We have opposing. I mean, who knows? We have opposing views. Uh, we'll get to the latest on that. And uh, baseball has its first female general manager, which is extraordinary. Thanks to baseball's lady man, ladies man, Derek Jeter. Hero Soap Company sponsors this episode. Link in the description below. Please click on that and order some soap. We'll get into that in a second. Let's start with Ghislaine Maxwell. So here's what's going on. Late last night, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers filed an objection to block the release of another deposition. So Ooh. that deposition that we got a couple of months ago was a little bit on the disappointing side. I think we were all so hungry for something. We were like, you know, it was a boner assassin. It, it was a little. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't what we were that. Yes. Moment we were looking for. Um, but here's a chance to get some more of that. So they're trying to block this new release. The objection was filed as part of a broader objection to the proposed timeline for unsealing additional documents in the case as required in a July ruling by the judge who's overseeing all this, Judge Loretta Preska, um, and the Miami Herald has obtained some of these documents. The Thursday filing seeks to block the release of a July 2016 deposition given by Maxwell in a civil suit involving Virginia Roberts DeFree. Preska last month released a long transcript of Maxwell's deposition from April of that year. So she yeah, was sat, boring. She sat for the boring deposition in April. I mean, there was a couple little tidbits in there, but it wasn't again what we were looking for. Um, she refused to answer questions in that deposition. She was found to have three passports on her. Uh, she was deemed to be obstructive, which I totally get. Her refusal to answer the questions, which stems from allegations from Epstein's victims, obviously led the judge at that time to order Maxwell to sit in July for what would be this deposition. So, OK, why this deposition now? Um, they think it's going to come in the next two weeks, by the way. So that's Ooh. that's good. Um, Maxwell's lawyer is obviously fighting and saying it's not fair to Maxwell. Uh, let's see here. They're saying, quote, there can be no doubt that matters concerning Ms. Maxwell's case have been excessively and extensively reported. The press, the government, the plaintiff have made every effort to make Ms. Maxwell a proxy for the now deceased Mr. Epstein. Uh, the filing said Thursday by Laura Menninger. The prejudice caused by the flood of coverage that comes with every new unsealing event in this case cannot be overstated. Okay. Basically, she's talking about us. I mean, not us specifically, uh, but people well, like she's talking about us. People like us that are just like waiting for this information. And you know what's crazy? I actually had a lawyer reach out to me who is a fan of the podcast, and she was like, she had this same sentiment. Like, I don't I, like everybody's rushing to judgment on Ghislaine, and it's innocent until proven guilty. And she wants to come on. I don't know. If we should have really. Oh, yeah. we should have her on. I feel like Ooh. people are going to eat her alive, but listen, it's the price you pay. Yeah. Cause I know how that feels. <laughs> Janine's like, I go through it. Screw this one. She... Every single week. So <laughs> come on. All right. Maybe we'll have her on. She was very nice. I'll tell you what she was very, I've, uh, I saved her email. I didn't. Um... That's funny. You didn't tell me that. That's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Bring um, her on. You say bring her on? I say bring her on. All right. I'll reach out to her then. Uh, let's see here. Those same arguments were made the last time. Uh, that's That was basically Ghislaine's arguments last time, and she was unsuccessful. Uh, Maxwell's lawyers asked Preska this time not to release depositions from two non-parties referenced only as Doe 1 and Doe 2. Lawyers for these two non-parties objected to their names being released, but did not raise any further objections before a November 4th deadline. So I talked about this last time, the process of putting these things out, you give people the chance to take their, to redact their name out of it, and then you give them a chance to say if they want to block it altogether. 
So Doe 1 and Doe 2, whoever that is, said, redact my name. And then when the deadline came and went for them to say, don't put this out, they didn't say anything. Ooh. So that's why this has been given the green light uh, to come out. Um, that's basically what's happening. Now, I first thought maybe this was Dershowitz because... He's like, let's put everything out. Let's put everything out. But I doubt it's him if they chose to redact the name, but didn't choose to. Oh, yeah. Have, hmm. it, have it blocked out. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Maxwell's attorneys indicated in the Thursday filing that they plan to challenge how federal prosecutors came into possession of the deposition from the civil lawsuit in the first place. Maxwell's lawyers previously suggested without any evidence that Jeffrey's attorneys might have turned over the deposition in violation of a protective order in the civil suit. That was disputed by a federal prosecutor who indicated that they obtained the deposition after asking two courts for access, one of which complied. Listen to this. Maxwell has sued Epstein's estate, which is being settled in the U.S. Virgin Islands, claiming that Epstein promised to pay her legal bills and did so up until the day he died in August 2019. The estate holds that no such deal was ever made. I mean, obviously. I mean, what are they going to say? But that, yeah. I mean, I, I don't even think that that's a great look for, for Maxwell. I know, it so, doesn't. I was just going to say it doesn't look good for her to say that. Well, yeah, why would you? I mean, but that uh, that kind of tells me that she maybe doesn't have the money that no everybody thinks she might have right like he gave so maybe her he wasn't paying her that much you know we always talked about that and then remember it came out in the last deposition that it was a hundred thousand dollars and nobody could figure out if it was per year or one-time fee but even if you're talking about per year 100k don't judge me on saying this but 100k <laughs> is not a lot of money no especially not in long island <laughs> Not not here, yeah, on Long Island, and not in New York, and not when you're maintaining this lifestyle that she was maintaining. You can't live it's off not, $100,000 not and live in New York City. Like I, I, I Absolutely guess, not, no. It's impossible. I mean, you can, but you got to have like 14 roommates in a, in a one-bedroom loft, which young exactly. people do, but not, you know. So um, that little, I found that little nugget to be super interesting because it's like, She's obviously got all these lawyers. They've got to be paid. I'm sure she's got money, but I don't know if she has lived the rest of her life money. Mm, I wonder. If she's carrying... Unless she gave it to someone else to hold for her? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe that's it. But but again, like, if I'm her lawyers and she's like, hey, I need to sue to get this money from Epstein, he told me, I'd be like, well, what, can, what else can we do? Because... It doesn't look good now. That's a huge bad look. A huge, huge bad look. Uh, Benninger's filing on behalf of Maxwell also repeated earlier arguments that information could be kept under a seal because it could be relevant to Maxwell's criminal trial. Um, the sealed items contained information relevant to the criminal action that may or may not be later determined as inadmissible in that trial, she said. Uh, so again, they're kind of just pulling out all their stops to keep this yeah. as, as quiet as they can, but it's coming out. So uh, basically next two weeks, because now after, after their deadlines passed, it gets fired back to Jeffrey's lawyers and they get to review it for a week. Um, okay. But we can actually have this by next week. I mean, it's very possible. We could have another Ghislaine document dump by next week or in five months or in five months. <laughs> I mean, they're obviously going to fight it as hard as they can. We waited like crazy the last time. But um, you and again, I don't want to fall into this trap or mislead anybody or clickbait anybody here. But one can't you know help one can't help but think if the April thing was unsatisfactory and the judge made her come back and answer more questions in July, that this one will have some more information to it. We'll see. I mean, wouldn't that be a nice Thanksgiving treat? <laughs> <laughs> Read it over with your family members. <laughs> yes, there could be more than 10. <laughs> you, Cuomo. 
that certainly would would help you get off any political conversation that one may be subject to in their family's uh thanksgiving gatherings it's true um do you know what i like to do now what? every time cuomo posts something on instagram or a story i like to reply to it and just tell him how much he's ruining new york <laughs> Are you turning into one of these people that replies to to tweets and things? Well, it's not tweets; it's just Instagram stories, which might even be better. <laughs> I'll send you some. All right. Well, now I got to tell you. I'm going to be honest with you here. I can now honestly say that I'm the only one on this podcast that doesn't do that because our our dear friend that's not here on this episode likes to do that as well. And I often look I at that as crazy I behavior. Saw that. Yeah, you're now just as crazy as he is. You're just as but nutty. See, I don't post it to everyone else could see. I just post it <laughs> to Cuomo. Great, I'm sure the FBI is going to love that distinction. When exactly. they come, can I Why talk? are you sending him death threats? Uh, they're not death threats. <laughs> I'm just telling him that how much I hate him. I mean, that's freedom of speech, right? So for those who don't know, uh, here in New York, as the coronavirus cases are starting to... Be, uh, get on the rise again quotes for Janine <laughs> <Quote, quote. laughs> um, the governor has has put in new restrictions into place which I believe start this evening um, bars gyms and restaurants have to close at 10 p.m. and then he also said what did he say about Thanksgiving no more than 10 people for Thanksgiving or no more than 10 people for gatherings no more than 10 people inside for gatherings inside for gatherings which, and for um, Thanksgiving, they should be small, too. Right. Listen. Which would put a damper on a lot of people's Thanksgivings, as I gather a lot of people have more than 10. I don't know if mine right. is or it's close to 10 or a little more than 10, but whatever. Um, so uh, Janine is not happy about these latest developments. No, I'm not. From the governor. Listen, we missed Easter. Okay, like that's like a bullshit holiday. Eh? <sighs> but Thanksgiving... And Christmas? Yeah. Now you're effing with me. Okay? <laughs> All right, but let me play devil's advocate here. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear what it. is he supposed to do? So now, uh, let me give you my thought on this. I Once we hit July and August, and the numbers in New York were super low, we had come down from 800 people dying a day in this area down to under 1%. I was so proud. And I was like, this is fantastic. We are on the back end of this. Wear the masks, fine. Whatever, social distance, fine. No big deal. Was able to go along with all of that. And then you start hearing people go, well, it's going to come back and fall. It's going to come back and fall. And I was sitting there doubting it. And I'm probably on the I'm probably on the podcast saying it. Why do they think this is going to come back and fall? If it's down less than 1%, it doesn't make any sense. So that was my thought, you know. I kind of bought into this. It has to do with politics and political and always kind of that threat of, oh, it's going to. But now that I'm seeing how people are behaving of like people are people are definitely a little bit more laxed. There was definitely yeah. Halloween parties, which is why they're saying that this is jumping back up again is people went to Halloween parties. I wouldn't know. Nobody it's invited true. me to a Halloween party. I'm an old <laughs> I'm an old geezer. But the thing is, not that many people are dying now either, though. It's still like twenty and below. It does it's seem not as yeah. It does seem to be there's something to there is something to we figured out how to treat it better, catch it earlier. Yes. I don't know. Um, and also, my friend who's a nurse said that people are not coming into the hospital for COVID. They're actually in the hospital for other things like um, surgery, car accident. Mm-hmm. And they have to test you in the hospital anyway. And they're finding out they have it and with no symptoms. With no symptoms. Yeah. yeah. I, I do. I do hear a lot of that, too. There, and there, there's also something to be said for, you know, the first the first wave when we were dealing with this, especially in New York. It was a lot to deal with all at one time. And now you don't have hospitals near being maxed out. Doctors, right. nurses near being taxed and working long hours. You don't really have that so much so you can take the time and, and make sure that everybody's getting the proper care. You know, also right. ventilators seem to be a little too soon mm -hmm. of a move. They kind of discovered that, you know, after treating this. So 
Yeah. I agree with you. I think people, less people are dying, which is, which is good. I think this is more now my feelings on this elsewhere are a little bit different because in some other places they're starting to max out their hospital capacity. I think there you have some cause for some real concern and you got to really do some drastic moves in those areas. Right. Well, here's the thing. They never did what, what we did. They never wore masks. Right. right. They didn't have to. Right. So it's, that's why their that's, cases are up so much more. That's why it's happening in other states, which is, a, which is a shame because having gone through it here in New York, I mean, everybody should have just seen what we went through and, and they should have just done what we did and they would have been fine. Like I, it breaks my heart to see that disconnect. Like we obviously took the butt of this for, for everybody else, you know, we, we, we were obviously well, in the worst yeah. shape and we came out of it by keeping distant, wearing masks and doing all that stuff. And how hard was that to do everywhere else? Like you could have avoided all of this. The thing is people were like, Oh, it's New York. There's so many people per inch <laughs> that, right. okay. That's why they're getting it. Right. But we have less people and less in, in more space. So that's why we're okay. Yeah. I wonder how much of this, like in this, in this week is to now, the mayor of New York City, de Blasio, just tweeted, or I shouldn't say tweeted, announced Ugh. that parents should be ready for schools to close as early as Monday. So I, my question is, is how much of this is to save the holidays? How much of this is to be a little bit more aggressive right now so that come Hanukkah and Christmas, you're in, a, you're in okay shape? I don't know. It's... Because doesn't Biden want to close it down for four to six weeks? Like, you can't do that again. I don't know. I, I He's talked about, I've heard things. I've never actually heard him say it. He may have. I know Well, President yeah. Trump said he said it, but I don't take that for much. Um, especially during a campaign. And that's not, you know, personal no, President Trump. <laughs> exactly. It's just two people Well, I just heard Nipple Rings, um, Mr. Nipple Rings talk. And he said... Um, the rate of infection is very low in schools. So my so, wife has been telling me that too, that especially in the younger grades, they're not, no. they're, they're not finding it to be as big of a problem as say like the high school grades. Right. So here's my feeling on this. And again, I, whatever you believe politically, please go on and believe that I'm not here to, to change your mind. I think masks should be worn. It's just a no brainer and it's not that big of a deal. I think the distance thing is fine. I think we're going into a weird time where people are not going to listen no matter what you say because they want to be with family members throughout the holidays. And I think that's going to be a lot of people's attitude. That being said, nationally shutting things down, I'm not sure if you need that anymore, but I do think you need, I think we're smarter about it and that little right. piece by piece, like let's slow things down here or maybe in this state or maybe just in this county or maybe just in this city that I could understand, but to just shut the whole nation down again, I'm not, I'm not so sure that that's, I don't think it's well, going to happen problem either is, way. If we, we follow what the city does. Yeah. Like Nassau and Suffolk. All yeah. Of Long Island will follow what the city does. Well, you know, my wife said to me before she goes, you know, I don't know if we're going to get shut down again. And I said, Shut it down in January. We shut down ourselves anyway. It doesn't make a difference. Like nobody goes anywhere in January. That's we, true. January we don't do anything. Is better. Th January is better than before Christmas. Sorry. I uh, so I'm realistically saying, and I'm again, I'm not for shutting everything down everywhere, but if you're gonna shut something down, January and February are the prime times to lock it because everybody stays in the weather sucks it's cold but again this is in the northeast in california in southern california in florida they're not dealing with this as much they're still you know it's true like we're heading in more the of weather a, is nice you know it's it's not nice here now we're heading into more of a crunch because our restaurants and our bars and whatever can't survive in outdoor settings during this time of year they're all yep. trying none of them are gonna it's not gonna happen so, you know, that's something they have to uh, that's something they have to figure out. But Chicago, as I understand it, is is going to go into a lockdown come Monday. They made that mm. announcement, too. So. 
you know, I mean, it just, I know there's a lot of people out there that hate this, but just wear the stupid mask mm-hmm. and stay away from people. It's not, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I get it. Just seems like an easy move. It seems I like I do if, wear my mask in the store. I wear it normally. Yeah. I mean, it seems like if we just want to get the economy like back, just do the mask thing for a couple of months and let's, let's make this happen. Um, here's the thing though. Cuomo, but he is such a boner killer. At first, I liked him. Yeah. You got up, you had your coffee, you listened to him. Now, well, actually, for the last few months, I had enough for him. Bye. Yeah, I thought he did the daily briefings a smidge longer than he should have. Mm-hmm. Because um, he liked to hear himself talk. But I think he did a good job overall. Like, Except this, the nursing homes. This, <laughs> except for that one. It could, could yeah. have been worse. A lot yeah, of this stuff could have, could have been worse. And I think he's handling it as as I think, you know, he wants what's best. You know, like, again, what's the alternative? We just let this thing start spiking up again and start filling up our hospitals again. Like, that's the problem. I, Everybody who's bitching about now, when that stuff goes down, they'd be like, well, what's happening? Why, do, why are we? Why is this happening? They'd be so pissed then. Right. I don't know. But then again, we lo- we know a lot more now, too. We do know a lot more now. We should be better with so, this. But I also, I don't want to live with this for the rest of my life. I want this to be eradicated. Like, we should be able to get this down to pretty much zero. I don't see any reason why that shouldn't be possible. I, I just don't. Don't Which you just mean- wish you had a time machine to go back to China and stop that guy from spreading it? <laughs> yep. I, I would do a lot with a time machine, a lot more than Marty McFly did. That's for damn sure. Um, finally, Jay Sabs, who is going to be the president? So a couple interesting things that are trending right now, uh, which I find pretty interesting. One of the Koch brothers is writing a book, which is basically a huge mea culpa of, boy, we made a mistake funneling tons and tons of money into, you know, I mean, it's funny that he's labeling himself as a huge libertarian now. I guess he's always been a libertarian, but I mean, this is the guy who put tons and tons of money into debunking, you know, climate change and global warming right. and funneled a ton of money into Republicans and some Democrats in some instances, uh, has a new book out now basically again trying to apologize for corrupting american democracy he said that he contributed to the divisiveness of the nation oh really which is hilarious to me because you know you have a lot of people that argue that a lot of people that don't understand that argue that you know climate change and all this is a hoax and all that stuff and garbage meanwhile what whether it is or not is up to whoever to decide but it's basically the reason why that narrative was even started was because this guy started plunking down money to candidates to stop talking about these things. Ooh. Candidates that know full well that some of those things do exist. So, um, and then they asked, uh, they asked him, Charles Koch, who he voted for, and he refused to answer. Ooh. Yeah. Who do you think he voted for? I think he voted for Biden. Now, I think, oh, really? I think that I'm pretty, I don't know if Trump, uh, he took, campaign contributions but i don't know if he took as much as biden from companies i was gonna say i mean maybe he oh, did i don't, I don't know. know he might have been the first candidate to not take money from coke i i don't know i i feel like that's right but that could be wrong especially during his candidacy because he funded a lot of it himself but then he did eventually start to take money so i don't know um but i do find it really interesting that you have one of the huge players on one side going i was wrong I screwed up and now I want to spend my time building bridges versus dividing people. Now, is he just saying that because the tide is switching with president elect Biden? I don't know. I don't know, but well, I will say this top Trump advisor, Peter Navarro says the white house is proceeding under the assumption of a second Trump term. (laughs) So (laughs) I mean, you take a look in our comments, people, people believe and think that he won the election and that he is going to be here in a second term. Yep, it's true. It's not just the comments, though. I see it all over. Uh, it's all over. Yeah, it's 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 all over. 
it's all over. And and I want to, I want to, again, I don't care where you vote or what you believe in. I'm not here to sway. If you want to know my opinion, I believe that the president should exhaust every legal option available to him. He should. If that's what he wants to do. If I was advising him, I'd say, think about the Republican Party in 2024. Take the high road. Get out. It's it's impossible. It's going to be hard. I don't, in my heart of hearts, believe that he's got enough to prove that he can do it. But I do think that there's a lot of irregularities and everybody's shouting about it. You have these every single election, you know. Fox News was getting their asses kicked because they were yeah. telling the truth. We talked about this. Newsmax and everybody else coming up. They turned around. They're starting to double back down again on, you know, voter fraud and the machines screwing up and all this, oh, all this really? stuff. Which if that's the case, again, like I keep telling people, they're going to find it. Like they're going to find Fox News is not going to shelf the story about how 200,000 ballots got switched from Trump to Biden. Then nobody is going to shelf that story. It's an nope. impossibility. You know, so if it's going to come out, it's going to come out a little bit more patience. But again, I just feel like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really look all that great. NBC News, by the way, joined Fox and the AP in calling Arizona for president elect Biden. So. Oh, they did. OK. Yeah. So that's it's, been, just, it's just weird to me how like. Each news can can call different states for people. Because yeah. but again. It is, and I would say that that is one of the great parts about the media because how you you get to truth is if you if we only relied on one news source or That's true. the government to tell us they can do whatever they want. If you have 10 different entities checking this, that's how you get... That's true. That's how you get to truth. That's how you get to consensus, you know? So... Well, we shall see. We shall Gore, see. 51 days he was president. Who, what? Gore was was president for 51 days. Was But did they ever call him president-elect, though? I, I can't remember. They did. They did? They did, yep. Because I just read about it on Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> so you know it's true. So you know it's true. All right. Uh, go visit our pals over at Hero Soap Company. They sponsor this episode um, every time you bar, buy a bar of soap, they send a bar of soap over to the troops, which I love. I do love the uh, the peppermint and the spearmint tend to be my favorites. I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get into that lavender, though. It's my promise to you that come next term, lavender is going to be, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to give it the All old. All right. The next time you take a shower, which is next week, please yeah. let us know. We'll live stream it. That's how big it's going to be, the shower, the once That's a week shower. Said. Exactly. Um, grab the link in the banner below or go on over to anthonyanair.com and, and click on the banner on the home page. Um, they have, by the way, now three different body washes available. <gasps> they have their freedom pack now available. So if you're thinking about getting something for somebody in your family, this is going to be a nice little, little, uh, little gift for the holidays. I'll tell you what too, you know, when you were younger, you like want toys and you want xbox and you know ps5 it's all the yeah now i'm like yeah buy me soap un soap underwear socks you know hair gel like these are the gifts i look forward to it, it, during the holiday You're turning into your 70 something year old father i'm a 70 year old man so if you got an and old that man a bad thing at all <laughs> if you got an old man in your life an old lady and you want them to smell better you want them to smell good you they take pride in their country Hero Soap Company is going to be absolutely perfect for them. Everybody's been trying it and everybody's been loving it. And then what they eventually wind up doing after they get a bar or two and they find out how great it is that I'm not lying. I'm not a snake oil salesman. Uh, they go and they sign up for the subscription, which they'll automatically send soap to you every single month, which is extraordinary. And you can save 20% off on that by using the promo code Anthony. Anything else there, Jay Sabs? Um, you know what? Just tomorrow is a lovely day for a protest with food and drinks, <laughs> maybe celebrating a first birthday for someone. Just saying. How much of your anger comes as these regulations come into place as you're trying to plan a birthday party for your daughter? Very annoying. Would you be angry at all? if? Because I got to be honest with you. As somebody, again, who doesn't have any parties to plan and nowhere to go after 10 o'clock at night, I'm okay. Oh, no. It, it bothers me. <laughs> Sorry. Even if I don't go out after 10 p.m., it still bothers me. It still bothers you? 
Yeah. Yeah. Just don't tell me I can't do something. <laughs> but yeah, so tomorrow there's just going to be a protest against Cuomo. Let me ask okay. you a question. At this protest, is there going to be uh, mac and cheese, fried mac and cheese squares? There might be. I, I'm not confident. So, you know, those that. protesters get hungry. I'm not confident. They get hungry. I don't know. I don't know. That didn't look confident to me. That looked like you're like, oh, shit, I got to order something. Really there quick. might be other things that are even better at the protest. Uh, we shall see. All right. Uh, we're going to leave it there. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our second channel, our Clips channel. We just got a bunch of stuff that we're about to start dropping on that. It's very, very exciting. Uh, link will be at the end of the video, of course, and in the description below. Uh, and uh, have a great weekend, everybody. We'll, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>